Well, this is a joint work with Dino Andrade from the University of Sao Paulo. And our main goal, our main purpose of this work is um, making some, some estimates for the memory parameter for a, initially for a stationary three state process. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, the memory parameter is also called the Hearst index, and it measures how each observation in a time series depends on the on the past. So when we talk about a long range, long range dependence, we are talking that we have to look at the whole history of the process. And I what you want to know is uh, how strong is that dependence on the past. <coughs> um, in particular this two state process is non motion So uh, we don't we don't want to use uh, the usual tools for motion process for the study the, the memory. Okay? And that the likelihood function is not manageable. So our proposed method is based on an approximate Bayesian computation, the ABC methodology, in order to obtain those estimates for the memory parameter. We said that a um, stationary process um, has uh, exhibit long memory or uh, long range dependence if the autocorrelation function satisfies this inequality here. Okay? So we are saying that the autocorrelation it decreases um, very, very, very slowly. This H here is called the memory parameter. When we have H equal to half, then we have a short memory process. And this is a typical graph for the autocorrelation function. In the first graph, we have an independent Bernoulli sequence. And here we have a process with memory for H equal to 0.9. Okay, so we can see here that this, uh, this function decreases very slowly. Okay. The ABC method uh, it is based uh, mainly when we cannot handle the likelihood function, but we, we are able to generate from the phenomenon, from the, the variable, from the process we are studying. So consider an observation X indexed by a family, uh, sorry, a distribution family for this observation f indexed by a family, that's the usual framework. And uh, we define also a discrepancy on the sample space and a prior distribution for the parameter. Mm -hmm. uh, given an observation, we can describe the ABC algorithm as follows. First, generate a value, some value of theta, according to the prior distribution, then generate a new sample from this distribution for that given theta that was selected, compute the discrepancy under x, uh, for x and y, uh, a new um, um, suitable discrepancy, and then accept this value of theta if the discrepancy is small. Otherwise, you reject theta. And you repeat this procedure a lot of times to obtain a um, sample that is Approximate um, that approximate the procedure distribution. Okay, and in this work we consider a discrepancy based on a suitable summary statistic for the time series. And the main idea is that uh, when we choose well that statistic and we define appropriate uh, appropriately how what, what is small, what is small for x and y for the distance between x and y. This sample that we obtain with the algorithm is uh, a good approximation for the posterior distribution. The accuracy, of course, depends on the choice of the statistic t and on what is the value of epsilon. And when we work with sufficient statistics, we can define it uh, in terms of an information, okay? how, uh, how much information we can obtain from a uh, sufficient statistic. When it is sufficient, we have that uh, it gives the more informa this is the more informative okay, between all the other statistics. Uh, we can define also this measure here that says that the statistics state gives more information as it has less 
entropy. So we can choose a minimum entropy criterion to select a statistics that, if it's not sufficient, is very informative in some sense. So we can extend the ABC to the ABC minimum entropy by choosing now uh, the best statistics between a collection uh, of statistics. So suppose we have K summary statistics, we apply the ABC algorithm for each of those statistics, and then we select the sample in the parameter space according to that that has the minimal entropy possible. Okay? That is how we apply this method in our work. Um, okay, so uh, which statistics can we consider for a process uh, for which we can we want to study the memory? The, memory. the most uh, the most old the statistics to say so is the RS statistics, the rescaled range statistics. Uh, it was first created by Hearst in the first article that studied the memories of the Nile River. And it is um, and so well. It's a rescaled range indeed. Uh, it me it measures the deviation of this rescalation. And uh, this is a very graphical estimate estimate in sense that we know that the area of statistics rescaled by this power of n uh, is approximately uh, a constant or it behaves well in the sense that. If we plot the graph of RS statistics uh, against A in the log log scale, the slope of the curve is a, a, well, a, a good estimate for the H, for the minimum H, for the parameter H. Sorry. The other statistics we consider is the quadratic variation uh, that is based on applying a filter on the time series that we have, a linear filter. So after we apply a filter on the time series we have, we calculate the quadratic variation. It is a good estimate of, of uh, also on the memory parameter. And uh, we consider in the simulation problem, we consider some values for age, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, uh, and we apply the ABC algorithm for each of those values, and we consider those statistics here. The RS estimator, there is a mutual graphical and imprecise also. And the full extended local wiggle estimator, that is also a usual estimator for the memory parameter. A, wa a wavelet estimator and the approximate <coughs> procedure mean obtained by the AIMS ABC uh, by minimal entropy. And, ah, uh, for the ABC of minimum entropy, we consider so this set of statistics. The RS, the quadratic variation applying a filter uh, of order 1 to 5, and several uh, transformations of those statistics, logarithm and square mm. So these are the results in a table. And uh, here we have uh, the different estimation method. Here we have the nominal values of age we have chosen, and here are the estimates. Uh, so we can see, for instance, that for 0.5 we have this point estimate, and this is uh, the standard deviation. Here is more graphical, we can see better uh, how those statistics perform. So uh, here we have the deviations from the nominal value. Here we have the methods A, B, C, D, which are the RS statistics, the um, local little, the weight ABC, ABC, minimum entropy. So our method is the D. Okay. Uh, for H.5, indeed, for all the, the nominal values we choose, we have that our method is the more centered on the nominal value and has the, the least variation. Okay. In, in the posterior distribution. So for the binary binary process, it performs very well. We think that it's it's, it's best in the that the usual methods that we can we can find in the market. 
Uh, for selected statistics, for, for that process which selects the medium or entropy statistics, we found, we found that the difference filter of F1 for the quadratic variation was the best for almost all values of, of H. That is what, uh, that is the selected statistics in, most, uh, in the most part of the simulation. Um, some extensions. Of this, well, that, that was the first step of our work, how to study the memory index for a binary process. Then we want to know how that performs for the fractional Brownian motion, that is an unusual process, a well-known process for long memory, and then for the Rosenblatt process, that is the simplest process for long, with long memory and no motion. So we, uh, we did some extensions for this fractional Brownian motion and the Rosenblatt process. This is the results for the fraction of our motion and it's amazingly precise. Uh, what we obtain with the ABC uh, minimum entropy method is really, uh, it, it appears that it is not true, but it is, okay? We don't cheat it <laughs> and it's really, really nice. Uh, even more, even best that the Wito, that Lava Wito, that is, is, a, is a great guy here, okay? Uh, and for the Rosenblatt distribution, sorry, for the Rosenblatt process, we have also uh, the best results among all the other uh, uh, alternatives that we have usually used, uh, usually appeared in literature. Okay, so uh, we think that our method of approximate the posterior distribution by the ABC using different uh, statistics works very well for our proposal. So that is, uh, that is ah, here, ah, here there is an application. I was wondering, sorry. Uh, we have an application uh, for the river, uh, the Tejo River, the, the, the river in Portugal. Okay. So we have here the time series, the original series. Uh, we did this analyze the, that series in order to obtain a um, stationary series to apply our method. And uh, here this is around this is a lot of the disease analyzed series and here we have that method based on RS, okay, on RS statistics. This log of this curve is approximate the the estimate for H. Mm -hmm. For this problem, this apply problem, we obtain also the estimates for all uh, of the methods for the previous method and the posterior mean using the model of the fraction baron motion, using the model of the Rosenblatt process. For both, we have a memory exponent about of 0.8. Here is the, the empirical density uh, from the ABC method of, that we obtain. Okay? This is using the fractional Brownian motion and here the increments of the Rosenblatt process. And that's our estimate for H. So the model of fractional Brownian motion is more precise in terms of measuring the memory of the process. Some reference, uh, well, this kernel convenience uh, and a very good review of different estimator for the memory. 